Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of advanced React WooCommerce theme with REST API. In this video, we are going to learn about how to create the single product page. So if you click on one of these products, it will take you to the single product page and you also have this carousel, the gallery carousel, so all the product images will be displayed here. And as you can see that the URL also looks clean, you have product and then the slug of the product, which is great. Um, you can also click on this icon and make this bigger and you can check out all of the pictures, which is great. Again, you can go back and click on any other products and you will have that information. You can also do add to cart from here and you'll notice that the back quantity has changed. It's got two products now and now if you click on that, you'll see that both the products are included, which is great. We'll add the increment decrement feature later, but I just wanted to have a simple product page first. Okay, cool. So now that we have, we've seen the demo, let's start creating one. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll download this NPM package called React Image Gallery. So we'll go ahead and click on that. Then go on to our repository and put npm install react image gallery and let's install it this will help us uh, create the gallery with the product with the carousel and the image thumbnail okay the next thing we do is we go to our project directory and then under pages we will create a directory called product and inside of this we want a dynamic route, which means that the URL, if you remember, is going to be slash product slash whatever the slug of that particular product is. So the slug will be dynamic. So in next years, we are going to use the square brackets and inside of that, I'll put slug. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, but may, uh, when you are actually using the get static props function, you have to use the same name there. Okay, so slug.js, let's add that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we'll say export, export default function product. And then inside of that, we'll have the props, which I will, which we will look at later. Okay. And for now, we'll just return null. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is basically use the get static parts. Okay. So, so what is get static path? So you can see that if a page is a dynamic route, like in our case, uh, it's going to be product slash whatever the slug of that product is, and it uses the get static props to basically get the data. Then in that case, it needs to define a list of paths to be statically generated. Okay. Uh, so what we would want is that when we run the npm run build, uh, we would want these paths to be statically generated. So it's already available. Now we may have like thousands and thousands of products we do not want to generate everything statically but yes all the products that we are looking at at least on the home page where we have certain product listing or even 50 for that matter at least we can have 50 static product pages um, available for our consumers so that it's, it's really fast so that's when we use the list of the parts and then we're also going to be uh, using the fallback parameter here to true, setting that to true so that any path that comes dynamically, let's say we generated 50 uh, products, uh, slugs, paths, okay, and uh, the rest of the products, if they're not available uh, in the cache, and they're not statically available, then in that case, they will be generated on the fly, okay, and that's what this fall fallback true means, so we will get to that in a moment, just, just to let you know, all right. So when you export a function called get static paths from a page, that's your static side generation. It uses the dynamic routes. Next jail will statically pre-render all the paths specified by get static paths. So whatever paths you're going to return from that, of course, it'll be an array of paths. As you can see, params ID one, ID two. For so for post, you have ID one, for ID two, etc. Depending on number of items you put it here, number of params you put here in form of an array uh, of objects, then that many paths will be created and rest of them will be incrementally uh, statically generated, okay? Brilliant. So, and then of course you have your get static props uh, inside of which you will have access to this 
uh, particular value and then you'll be able to use that to make it to fetch the data okay so that's that's a bit of overview and i've already explained the get static props to you so uh, this basically gets the data server side and passes that to the component uh, so that you can like for example here it passes that uh, post to the component and then you can use that to render it on the front end right um so when should i use the get static parts well, you should use it when if you're statically pre-rendering the pages that uses dynamic routes and the data comes from the headless CMS. Data comes from a database, data comes from the file system, data can be publicly cached, data must be pre-rendered and be very fast. So in all of these scenarios, uh, you know, you use the get static path, okay? And when does it run? It'll only run during the build production, okay? So when you do npm run build, that's when this function will be called and it's going to dynamically generate those routes and make it available for you and create those static paths. It will not be called during the runtime and you can validate the code written inside the get static path that's removed from the client side bundle with this tool. So you can take a look at that. So just to give you a summary, get static props runs uh, during the next build. For any pass return during the build, get static props runs in the background when using fallback to true. And get static props is called before the initial render when fallback is blocking. So you can read more about it and um, uh, you have this information. But let's get to uh, how we're going to do this. All right. So coming back, so we're going to say export async function get static parts. And then inside of this, we need to have the products data. So we'll say data equals products equals await and then get product data. So we already have a function which we created to get the products basically. So we are adding that and then we're just saying 50 pages. Okay, uh, so 50 products basically. Okay, so we're going to call this function which we already created, which is going to use our WooCommerce REST API package uh, to basically make a REST API call to the route, which is products, and then uh, get around a uh, maximum to 50 products. Okay, so this will contain our products. And then all we have to do is construct those parts. So if you remember over here, if you want to have like post slash one, post slash two, we have to pass ID, so in this case they're using ID equals one, ID equals two. In our case will be params. Instead of ID, this will become slug. And instead of this number, it's going to be like whatever the slug is, let's say for this one spices, for this one beauty hyphen products, etc. Okay, so, so let's do that. So I'm going to, first of all, return this. Okay, and of course this is going to be an array. So we have to construct that. How do we construct it? We construct it using the products because this product has all of the products data. So, and this has a slug, so you have to use that, okay? So we'll say const parts data equals this. And we basically wanted something like this. This will be the shape. And this could be something like pendant this could be shirt or anything. Okay, so this is a shape we want to generate uh, using the parts data, right? So we're going to say this will the shape will be like, like this. Okay, and um, fallback will be true. Uh, usually put fall, if you use fallback to false, that means uh, it's only going to generate the um, uh, 50 products. Uh, since we are saying 50 posts per page, we're only going to generate 50 products statically if they are available maximum, but uh, it's not going to generate anything else. So if any other products that are available, if you try to access it through that URL dynamically, it's not going to be available. Okay. So in order for us to do that, we set the fallback to true. And when we set the fallback to true, what we also do is we make sure that our component handles that because It'll take some time uh, for that particular product data to be generated in case if it isn't, all, isn't already available. So in order for us to do that, we're going to say um, import use router from next router. And then over here, we'll say const, const 
router equals use router <coughs> okay and then we're going to check if router dot fallback is fallback true then return dev loading so basically this means that um, if this is true that means it's fetching the data that particular uh, product was not available in one of the statically generated uh, routes uh, this is the new one doesn't it's out of that 50 it's, it's beyond that 50 uh, products that we had generated the uh, static pages for so it's going to go ahead and dynamically uh, make a call to the get static props so I'll say export async function get static props and then inside of that the params we'll have access to params and then so here is where it's going to make a call to the API and get the data. So we'll, we'll get to that in a moment, but just to let you know, okay? So coming back, so we have to basically generate the paths first. So in order for us to generate the path, we are going to first check if the product has length. If it is, then products.map, product, product, otherwise null. And then over here, if we have product.slug available, then we're going to say paths data dot push so we want to push this shape basically this shape right here because it's going to be an array of these items so we'll push that and then instead of this hard-coded value we'll just say product dot slug okay so eventually when the code reaches here this will be an array and we're just passing that to the paths okay because that's how it is done as you can see that in paths you need the array of the params with the um, name of that particular slug in this case and here it's id all right cool so then when we come here and get static props we'll have access to this param so whatever params we have available we'll have access to that we need to pull slug out of it okay so out of the params we have to pull the slug so we'll say const slug equals params and then over here we'll say const data and then we're going to get the header footer data so i think we've already done that so we're just going to copy paste that so we'll go to pages index and then we have the header and footer data so i'm going to copy that okay like that and already pulled that on the top like, like so so we have the header and footer data we also want the product data so we basically want the product by slug so let's create a particular function i'm going to name it as i'm just going to copy this basically just name it as get product by slug and then over here we'll say slug products slug you can say product slug Okay, like so. Say like that. And then we're going to say it like that. All right, so this function basically will allow us to get a single product by slug, and that's what we want. So we're going to say, we'll just copy paste that, and it'll say get product by slug. We already have the slug available, so we'll pass that. So for each of the page, uh, because the static path was already generated, the slug will actually be available over here in the get static props on the params. Okay, so we'll have the access to the product, not the product. So then we're going to say, so we have the header and footer data. Let's copy that. Return. So we have product and then this will be product. If we have product dot length, this will be an array actually. So then in that case, we'll say product, the first item, and otherwise just be an object. Okay. So we have revalidate, we have the props, we have header footer, we have product, all of that. Okay. So now if I go back and uh, just say header footer data and product, I should be able to get access to all of this here. So now if I say, let's go back, refresh, 
I'm going to run it again. So I'm going to say npm run dev. So I'll run npm run dev. Refresh. Okay, now if you hover over it, of course, uh, the URL currently is not what we expect it to be. So if you notice that the URL is actually for this one is the backend URL, which we don't want. So we're going to go to our code and we'll go to source and product. And over here, where we are saying product.permalink, we'll say product.slug and over here, say slash product product slash product dot slug okay because that's the path right for pages we have the product slash product and whatever the slug is that's what we're saying slash product and whatever the slug is all right so that'll be the urls if you go back now and if you check the url has been changed uh, now it's no longer the backend url it's the front end url which is this one slash product slash gift collection so if i click on this one now you'll notice that it's gone to the product gift collection. Of course, there's nothing here because in the component, we're not really returning anything. We're just returning null. I mean, we could return very well, return hello also. So we'll say hello over here. So you can see hello is printed here on top. And if you take a look at the product, because we console the product, you can see that we've got all the data available for this particular product, right? So you have the average rating, uh, you have categories, you have um, the description of the product, permalink of the product, uh, price HTML, right? In stock, all the information that you need, including the images. So images is also here. There are four images for this particular product. So all of the URLs also here. So this is a good enough data for us to construct the data about the single product page. And we're going to use that, okay? So brilliant. I, so I think that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll continue further. We will go ahead and create the component to be able to render the content of the product, a single product. And I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Please consider giving super thanks uh, to support my work. And uh, please start my repository to support my work. Next year's WooCommerce REST API and follow me on GitHub to support my work. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.